Upset was like Attila plays without a brain, and Attila called Upset a coward. So <laughs> Upset said, we're getting rid of the Draven, the brainless champion, and Attila's like, no, you're not playing that safe, cowardly, timidly Ezreal. Now, the important thing to remember about Attila is, while many people may know him as this aggressive AD carry player, he was one of the... Uh, the the AD carry players that had an insanely deep champion pool. There was a time where he went up against Reckless and by uh, Fnatic, and there was seven AD carry bands, and he was still able to deep into that pool and get himself the Jinx. So even though a lot of these strong champions have been taken off the board, you still have to expect the Vitality to have something prepared. I'd like to put some numbers to that for you, Verdius. Attila, in the nine games he's played, has played seven unique champions. In the nine games that Shulka have played, Upset has played Ezreal and Kaiser. That's it. So it really just highlights the point you're making, and it is an insta-lock Yasuo for Shaka. I love the Yasuo, and I've been waiting to see more of this champion here in the LEC, because ever since the AD carry items got reverted, Yasuo's win rate just skyrocketed. This champion is so good. He was buffed when the items were originally changed, and now that it's back, he's just an insane champion all around. It's curious as to where it's going to go as well. You would assume Upset can't play it, but you never know what he's been practicing secretly. Uh, we'll see where it can be flex perks a fantastic performance on it yesterday in the bot lane. But it looks like for the time being, Vitality gonna stick with pretty standard priority. We've seen a lot of Braum being highlighted for a lot of teams with the fresh ban that might raise in priority for the side of Vitality. Yeah, I definitely think Braum is a is the best support on this patch, actually, and that you should be looking for it yourself. The other pick I look at now as we shift back to the side of Shalka is the Kennen for Odwamne. That is a matchup that a lot of pros like into the Urgot because of the range you have. You can sort of bully him out and then have a really high impact in team fights, and it's also been a favorite of Odo's this season. All right, see if he decides to lock it in. Ender with the Kaisa secured for Attila. Two games played, zero losses, and Attila has gone 5, 2, and 14 on the pick. The tempo of this draft is very, very slow. It's very deliberate, and now we've seen another lock in here for Shalka. It is the Sejuani for Memento. Ooh, so already Shalka kind of showing their hand a little bit. But I was going to say, because I thought they would insta-lock that Jace then, and I was expecting then the Jace to go in the top lane, the Yasuo to be in the mid, and they're actually going to early... Wow, this is very surprising to me from Shalka. The main reason it's surprising is because they put a huge priority on getting the Sejuani, who's kind of slipped through the draft recently and hasn't been as much of a big pick, um, but also the fact that they would go for the Alistair even when Braum is available. And the only reason why I could see them doing that is because they have an AD carry pick in mind that could help deal or give them a strong 2v2 against the Kai'Sa. Was it the G2 bottom lane Yasuo Alistair as That's well? Very Just true. as my two cents to remember. True. Yeah, that's the thing that I see when I see these three champions. I see so many synergies sort of weaving together. First of all, you have the Alistar for the Yasuo. Regardless of you, if you put them in the same 2v2 lane or not, that's a lot of power in the team fight. But also, for Sejuani, you have two other melee champions that are going to be stacking up her passive more quickly. That means faster CC, and that means a lot of lockdown here for three champions that all want to deal damage and go without being stopped in their tracks. Yeah, I've heard a lot of pro players say that the 2v2 synergy of uh, Yasuo and Sejuani is very strong, especially at the level 6 mark as well. So it looks like Shalka, they're pretty happy with what they've gotten so far, and I'm surprised to see the Vladimir. We haven't really seen any of it, I believe, in the LEC so far. Um, and you would expect that to go into the mid lane, unless we something crazy like a Kai'Sa jungle and then a <laughs> Vladimir That'd bot lane. That'd be pretty wild. I have seen I have seen Kaisa flex around in some solo queue games, but so far on the pro scene, sticking to that bottom lane. What I look toward more, for more is maybe this Yo this Vladimir wants to follow the Yasuo around. I mean, now it's going to be stuck in the mid lane, it would seem, but it could also go up top side sure. as well if you want to get Urgot out of a potentially bad matchup, which you can see Vitality don't want to have happen. They ban away the Kennen and the Jace. Those are the two best answers into the Urgot. Now, if there's a third one that Odo can pull out of his magic hat of, magic hat of picks, that that means you flex the Vladimir to the top lane and get out of that situation. Now, with the Morgana ban, you would expect a Braum ban to follow up next from the side of Shalka. Just take that off the board, give the disengage tool uh, away. Ooh, Gragas like is that. another good one as well. Though, yeah, I do, we often see Gragas being picked into it, and that's probably why Vitality were fine letting the Braum through into the second half. They did bring out the Gragas a couple times so far this split, and Jack Troll has had a lot of great performances on Yeah, the Gragas, of course, having the interaction of just stopping the Alistar in his tracks with that headbutt. So now, looking over towards Vitality, they're going a different direction. And this isn't really the Vitality we expect with a Tom Kench in the bottom lane and a Kai'Sa. Some more scaling picks for them to perhaps avoid 
devote more attention to their primary carry so far in 2019, which has been Jazuke. Well, something they used to do a lot of last year was draft a lot of uh, semi-global ultimates, and Tom Kench being one of them, where they would use things like the Rise and the Tom Kench to set up flanks behind their opposition and catch people off on side lanes. So perhaps we're going more back towards something of the 2018 vitality that we saw, which is just a lot of map movements, a lot of skirmishes, a lot of picks. I mean, I think Jack Troll's Tom Kench is a signature champion, and we've seen Ignore running Blitzcrank already doing very well. If you get some, he's been devoured. The option's great. Uh, take a look at those Vlad numbers for you really quickly. Prophet and Whirlip have run Vladimir the split, and they have both lost games, and we have a last second lock-in. So Silas top, Yasuo mid? Yeah, yes. I think there's going to be a Silas top lane up against the Urgot if yep. they can make it happen. I don't think you want to lane Silas against the Vladimir, nope. per se. He can avoid your engages very easily. You're not going to be able to attack him, and Vladimir's just going to be able to poke you and harass you during the laning phase. Not many great ultimates to steal, though, Ender. I'm kind of looking across the board, and I think Kai'Sa ultimate could be pretty good. Tom Kench ultimate doesn't really have a lot of value initially. What do you think? Well, here's the thing. I think the Tom Kench ult can get really fun, because you can choose to bring someone else into the back lane with you. True. Say you bring an All-A-Star. You never see Tom Kench and All-A-Star <laughs> on the same team. You get All-A-Star to do an insect play with the Tom Kench ult. There's so much crazy stuff we can go into later in the game, but I also see a Vladimir ult, which would tie in so well to this beautiful Team, team fight comp that Chalka put together. And uh, what I do also quite like about the Silas is he is typically built AP, which means that they are quite well rounded in terms of damage on the side of Schalke. Uh, what I will be watching is how well the Silas actually does, because not just here in Europe, but internationally, I haven't seen many great Silas performances. I know many pro players consider him a good matchup into the Urgot. He has good sustain. He's very good at skirmishing and trading, and in his side lane, he offers a lot of threat, but I haven't really seen him run away with the game or be a massive carry. You didn't like Faker's Silas stealing a Zier ult? He got obliterated by that Azir. <laughs> it wasn't even a competition. It was trying to land the sarcasm, so thank you for playing with me on that one. So, Odo, can you buck the trend? Shalke and Nulfia have received a lot of praise from perks on stage yesterday, from amazing in PGL yesterday as well. And, and now we get to see them stepping up against one of the teams that has become one of their rivals, at least to fans and viewers at home, because they joined the league at similar times. They had similar backstories coming from Challenger. And of course, with Vitality going to Worlds, Schalke going to finals last year, and this being a rematch of semi-finals, there's a lot on the line. There absolutely is, Trevor. And with Schalke looking so good so far in this season here in the LEC, and Vitality starting to struggle, this is when they need to sort of cha start changing things with this team. They need to take down those above them so they can make a viable uh, contention for first place. Oh, first, that's ambitious. First, sorry, first place, maybe a little bit, a little <laughs> bit heavy. That making a competition for the first loser, right? <laughs> Behind V2. That's, that's the way my dad taught me to call second place. You could play, get contest to play against the first place team. Okay, you can that's a good indeed. One too. Of course, if you finish first or second in the regular season, you are guaranteed a spot in the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam. We've been talking about those tickets going on sale next week. Go check it out at eu.lesports.com. For now, though, let's jump back into our match of the day. This is the first of the second round, Robin. And as it stands, Odoamne Memento stepping forward, spotting up Mowgli in his own jungle. Yeah, so something I'm actually noticing on Mowgli right away is that he doesn't start with the, the normal yellow trinket. He's going for the sweeper because he thinks some wards are placed in his jungle. And of course, I was going to set this up. Maybe he was looking for an early play and was going to try to sweep out vision in the river. Unfortunately, he's going to come up without any luck, and that will not be put to very good use. Looks like nothing too crazy is going to happen in this level one. Uh, Neither jungle will be starting on the bot side of the map, and they'll also both be doing solo clears. Many, many solo queue players right now being like, wait a minute, this is a viable strategy? I don't <laughs> need to give my jungler a pull. Uh, and it does uh, reduce your clear speed a little bit. It does mean that you sometimes have to invest some of your pots as well, um, but it does mean that your laners can get to lane sooner and start leveraging, uh, or they don't have to run the risk of getting behind in terms of experience. Yeah, right, you, you don't end up losing any minions, and you also can contest for the push early on into the game. And and jungling in pro play is so very different than jungling in solo queue, because in solo queue, you go for level two ganks, level three ganks all the time. Whoa, 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 pro this play. is vitality, man. Okay. They always go for level two, <laughs> level three gank. <laughs> that being said, there's much less of it in pro, and it's much more important to be able to confuse your opponent. So being on the wrong side of the map, the side of the map they don't expect you, can be 
it can come from not getting a leash and revealing your starting position. I'm very excited to see which direction Mogi decides to gank. I wonder if we'll be down the bottom lane. The reason I set that up, uh, we're going to tune into Upset's POV stream really quickly. Uh, this game you can follow along with exactly how Upset is playing if you go check out twitch.tv slash Riot Games 2. This is his perspective right now and right now as it stands. Upset is being pushed under the tower by Attila and Jack Troll, this Kaisa and Tom Kinch. Of course, when we focus in on him, he misses a minion. <laughs> of course. And of course, you have to call it out. I have to call it out. Everyone in Twitch <laughs> chat right now is spamming <laughs> LOL missed minion. <laughs> Uh, so the <laughs> <laughs> quick pivot there. Um, I still don't know how to follow that up. So right? usually <laughs> in this bot lane matchup, what we often see is that Kaiser will have the push, especially with the time Kench, because they can threaten the Alistair Sivir pretty effectively. Um, once Sivir gets a couple more levels in her ability, she'll have a lot more wave clear, which means that she'll start to get the push. But the cool thing I love about Kaiser and Sivir is that both of them are exceptional scaling champions, um, but Kaisa's much better at finding a solo target, isolated, or just diving onto them and killing them, versus Sivir, who's just so much better at dealing AoE team fight damage. And uh, the clear difference is who's better able to execute upon those styles. And uh, it's pretty easy to understand that Sivir is usually easier to execute upon. Well, as far as easy ganks are concerned, let's see whether or not Mobi can get the flash, the flag and drag. Not going to land oh, it off to the, the dash away. Odawam is able to use the kit of Silas to literally walk away to safety. That opportunity was presented because Odo was shoving very, very heavily. Ignor fancies himself an opportunity. Headbutt, pulverized. That's going to knock Attila into the wall temporarily. Stun him up as well. Devour comes down from Jack Drop. And Ignor is going to get blown up. First blood, lick and stick by Jack Troll. Man, Jack Troll just going right on in there on the TK. I think he hit him with a little spam left there, too. Vitality are feeling it. The rivalry between Attila and Upset is in full force. And Schalke, they tried to generate a bit of pressure down towards the bot side of the map. They thought that they could try and make that trade happen, but the risk you have with trying to engage on an Atom Kench is the running away part. The fact that he can apply those three stacks, he can set up the stun, get the consume, Schalke was just not expecting the amount of burst damage to come out from the side of Schalke. Yeah, I mean, Tom Kench does a whole lot of damage early on into the game. You can sort of see how this is set up, because Ignar sees an opportunity. He wants to burn the Devour, so he can then go for a trade later on. Unfortunately, he doesn't realize that Jack Troll still has his cooldowns and immediately turns for the full isolated damage off of the Q burst from Attila's Kaisa. Yeah, really good stuff there from Vitality. Great punish, and you know, don't want to call it out, however, we saw a couple of misplays like this from Ignite yesterday. Uh, his Gragas was out of position quite a few times while he did have great plays, and I'm expecting him to bounce back as the game progresses. He is someone that is quite eager to create opportunities, and sometimes they backfire. Well, talking about eager opportunities, Memento and Mowgli find themselves in the mid lane. That's a very good dash away as Memento is able to Whoa. escape. The stun comes down. Sanguine pull will buy some time as Jazuke is getting burned. Oh, but Dage manages to pick up the kill. There's only a second one on the card. Mowgli goes down. Golden Age just buys a few more seconds. Mowgli oh, no. turns it back around. That's a double kill secured. Two for Vitality. It was so well done from Abadage at the start, but Schalke bit off way more they can chew right there. They had the kill, but they thirsted for more. That's gold greed, and uh, that's what that is. There was the Yasuo. He saw an opportunity to get two kills, and he dived underneath the tower. So, initially, neither mid lane and level six just yet, but Sejuani has control over the river, and so he sees an opportunity to create a flank here. The knockup is a Available on Abadage, doesn't use it very early on. He's waiting for Memento to arrive. Once Schalke recognizes that the commitment has come through from Vitality, they go for the engage. And Chizuke just gets burst out before he's able to respond. They don't realize how much extra damage they actually get onto Mowgli. They think they can get the kill, but Tower, it does a lot of damage early on to the game. At first, I was like, rookie of the no. split. But then I was like, rookie. <laughs> and Abadage just chases a little too far. So Mowgli picks up one. Jazuke, he didn't even know that was happening. That was shock and surprise. <laughs> I calculated, baby. I did a thing. <laughs> well, very, very good start. Three kills to one. Vitality are up. 1,500 gold against the team that was expecting to uh, be the favorites this game, especially based on yesterday. And we caught a quick glance there of uh, Oda Wamne, stolen away Cabo's ultimate. Yeah, and I actually really like this move here from Vitality. You know, Attila and Jaxal took control over the bottom lane. They got the push going, and Mowgli just immediately paths down here to take the Ocean Drake. Another very early Ocean here, which we've said before, is so beneficial for the laning phase. It means you can stay longer, you're not going to run out of mana, which contributes to a push and plating, which becomes much easier once you just don't really run out of health and mana. 
So the thing for Vitality right now is that early game is looking great. And when you look at how the rest of the game will progress, uh, the great thing about Vladimir is he's one of the few champions that can match Yasuo on a side lane. The fact that he has such low cooldowns later on into the game and he has so much sustain means he can act... Oh, hang on a second. Oh, nice. Big trade. Otis trying to use that sustain from the W to right. jump back and forth. All right, all right. We both expected something to happen, but you can see Cabo shot Fear Beyond Death is on cooldown. Hence the reason Cabo didn't try to back away and... Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Odo didn't back away. Now, the matchup between Silas and Urgot is very, very interesting. We might have to pause for just a moment, though, because Mowgli, Mowgli Jack Troll and the rest of the gang are coming in to steal away this red buff. Chalka can't really do anything about it because they have control over the bottom half. Now, Mowgli pushing into the jungle reminds me of something Memento said yesterday on PGL. He said, and I quote, that in tomorrow's game between Shalka and Vitality, either Memento or Mowgli will push into the enemy and int two times. So far, Memento has one point on that game, and Mowgli was able to invade, <laughs> set up some very good vision, and steal away the, the, the red buff. So Vitality still maintain control, lead, and information. I think the best part about that whole setup, too, was Mowgli actually walked through the river, put down three control wards that literally piloted his entire path into the enemy jungle, so he knew Shulka didn't really know what was going to be going on, so he did have a little bit element of surprise. Shulka were slow on the rotation, whereas Vitality had their laners from mid Memento's and bottom level six, over early. I think you're gonna want this. Oh, really? Glacial Prison! That's a big kill onto Jazuke. He's gonna escape for his life. Hemoplate will bring some health back, but Abadage secures a 2, 1, and 0. Now Mowgli, he's done it once before. Memento, not gonna get slammed or dunked just yet because Abadage is the target. He's locked inside the catapult. Wrong way, buddy! Tower shot is going to help out, and Mowgli gets a reply. He just loves that tower, man. He's like, I will sa sacrifice myself. Not gonna give the kill over to Attila on the bottom side, but a nice responding play there from Vitality, who committed the ultimate from the Tom Kench, and this is what we talked about. They like to use those globals. We've seen them before try and solo out members uh, and collapse upon a play. You gotta keep your eyes on the top lane now, quick shot, because we actually see Cabo going pretty aggressive onto our Odo Amne, and Mowgli is lying in wait with the Tom Kench as well. We may have needed a second play by play card, for this game as another gank is happening. Jack Troll and Mowgli trying to push forward. Odo now has a cataclysm to his name. This could make tower diving a little more unique. Yeah, that's the real, uh, the catcher right here because if you dive against the Jarvan, you're just trapped inside of that cataclysm for a few more seconds even after you get the kill, which could result in a kill turned around. But don't worry, Trevor, I got you. If these fights get a little bit longer, we know these guys like to go for the engagements, I'll pick you up. I'm looking forward to it. This is, of course, the... Uh, uh, one for one trade in the mid lane, where Abadagi once again shows an appreciation for that mid turret. So again, Abadagi, he sets up the knockup with the Q, he lands the ultimate, means that you can guarantee the Sejuani LT to follow. Uh, and overall, this is why we see a lot of the Sejuani Yasuo duo considered to be so strong. It's very easy to set up those ganks, either the Sejuani ulti lands or the Yasuo knockup lands, and you're pretty much guaranteed a kill. And then Jarvan makes the decision here to commit onto the Yasuo by locking him down in the Cataclysm, knowing that he doesn't have flash. And the best situation there for Abadagi was let's not give any gold over to the carries in the bot lane for Vitality. And right now, Abadagi and Shalka want to make a play in the mid lane. Jazuke waiting. Man, Shalka is so committed to this mid lane. Um, over and over, we're seeing roams and attempts. While that was happening, though, Upset was left alone to his own devices down in the bottom lane. We'd like to just confirm this is his first ever Sivir uh, here in the European top league. Of course, first time in the LEC as well. Uh, we're 11 minutes on the clock. I just look, 105 CS for Upset Sivir. Attila, 118 in terms of this matchup. You can see some of the stats. Just want to highlight it because of all the trash talk. Um, Upset has traditionally been the second highest CSD at 15, and he also contributes 30% of his team's damage. And uh, we'll need to be a little bit of catch up this game as he's slightly behind. But it looks like we got yet another dive coming. Mowgli and Memento. This is the m, &M duo in the mid lane. Glacial Prism will come out. That will get a stun. The ball is coming out. And Abadagi this time round will try to get to the tower as quickly as he can. He finds the tower! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Troll gets Here's the power. Odo Amne is running for his life. Ignore and Upset are trying to turn this one around as Vitality have got the early advantage. Attila's got 75% HP and still safe in pushing forward. Upset does not have the damage to push it further. And Vitality win that 
out. So this time around, Vitality respond to the play and come out on top. They're recognizing that, you know what? Memento's ultimate should be up soon. They're gonna look for another gank in the mid lane. We've gotta be primed and ready, and Mowgli was there. They had more than enough burst down to turn it around, and even though Silas TP'd in, Kabashar didn't have it available, and Vitality could still come out on top thanks to the Tom Kench ulti coming into mid lane. And now Vitality are the ones positioned around this dragon, except Mowgli is going to the top side. This whole thing is an elaborate ruse right now because Shalka expect Vitality to be committing everyone towards the bottom side, but because they don't, Vitality sneak an objective and then can use that to get more money and then eventually secure a dragon while Shalka have to respond. So first dragon secured. It's nearly a 3,000 gold lead for Vitality, a 15 CS lead in the top, 20, 15 CS lead in the middle with a completed proto belt, uh, 10, 12 CS in AD carry. Vitality's early game has got them significant advantages and Mowgli's job in 203 and that mid outer turret are doing so much work for Vitality. Now I'm looking at some itemization here from Jazuke and everyone were playing on the on the hotfix 9.3 patch. He went and picked himself up an ancient coin. Now ancient coin will not drop gold coins for you unless you have an ally near you. That's just how it works now after the hotfix. So well, what does this mean? Do, are people gonna like be coming mid lane the whole time? Like, is he gonna lane with Jackdaw? Because this seems to not make a whole lot of sense. So I think it's less to do with the uh, actual gold income and more to do with just the stats that it gives you. Considering that it's a fairly cheap item, you get movement speed, cooldown reduction, and you also get base health regen. So I think they're all things that Vladimir is actually very happy to have. So when you combine that with the Proto Belt, I think that he's sitting around an extremely high uh, cooldown percentage right now. Uh, it's sitting at like 25, 30%, something like that. Uh, uh, let's see, he's Champions up to 45%, so 45 you know, he, has, he has transcendence from his runes because he's uh, uh, gone into the sorcery tree, yeah. so he's going heavy, heavy, heavy inspiration as well for the extra 5%. Now, Memento, can he steal this dragon or will he even try? Uh, there's not enough vision, go jumps into oh. the pit, I did not expect that! Memento may need to flash out to safety, nope! Manages to use Bristle and just dashes over the wall. Vitality get the Drake though. They extend that gold lead to three and a half thousand, and Shelka are starting to fall further and further behind. So I appreciate that you talked about items there, Ender, because there are actually a few items I want to run through. So really like this uh, high investment cooldown reduction that we're seeing from the Vladimir, pretty unique. But also, Kaisa was one of the champions that a lot of debate went around behind how do you actually build her now? Do you bother going for Infinity Edge first, or do you just rush Rage Blade? And it looks like Attila actually working towards Infinity Edge as a first item. But on top of that, Cabo Shard running the Executioner's call it, uh, calling as well means that it mitigates a lot of the trading power that Silas brings in the 1v1. Yeah, and you know, I sort of wanted to go in this earlier when we talked about the Urgot versus Silas matchup, but it, it's very interesting because Urgot is a champion that wants to get you very low so he can execute you. Silas is a champ that also wants to be low HP so he can make the full use out of his W heal. The fact that Cabo Shard now has gone for the Executioner's call is going to reduce that healing and make it so much easier to surprise burst Odwamne when he does get low. It feels like Odwamne has been sort of aware of that though, whenever we've seen the trading patterns, has been on the same page. And as we've crested the 15 minute mark, Vitality are significantly further ahead. Reminder that this is, of course, Shelka and Vitality rematching. Shelka won the game last time they played, but I want to look at how Shelka have played over the last uh, five weeks. Their goal difference at 15, they're averaging, well, they're plus uh, uh, 800. Their first tile, they picked up 77% of the games. They didn't do it today. They've had a very good Drake control. They're losing it today. And today they were favorites. A lot of people were predicting Shelka to win this matchup. Now, they're not out of the game. They have a lot of tools in Silas, Yasuo, and Siva. But they've got to be so careful not to fall further behind and just let the Jarvan, Vlad, Kaisa run over there. You know, I'd like to talk right now, Trevor, but I have a feeling that a fight is about to kick off as look at Jack Troll. All right, Jack Troll gets caught up, knocked up, put down. Last breath will do a lot of damage. Jack Troll will finally go down. It's Memento that picks up the kill. But it took a long time to burn through that Grey Hell. I feel like I've seen Shalka do the same play so many different times this game where they use pockets of vision around this mid lane with very good control to get a flank onto whoever Vitality have there at the moment. So it's another good use of vision and vision denial that Shalka can take to get a kill around this middle lane. And now we see the mid lane is moving off to a side lane as well. Uh, Abadage is going to be forced under his tower a lot more because this is a cool thing about the Vladimir and Yasuo matchup is he can match, oh, I mean, he has a lot of valuable sustain which really helps against a champion like Yasuo. The cooldowns are obviously very, very low, but also he has way more wave clear than the Yasuo and the threat of an all-in is very real. So uh, it's one of those champions that can just match
catch the asshole as the game gets later and later, and as long as they're keeping pressure on keeping the asshole down, things are gonna stay advantageous for uh, Vitality. Yeah, exactly. Abadaga has to sit under the tower, and even then takes a really bad trade, but there they go in! Whoa, that was such a bold move! What? Why did Jazuke do that? I don't understand. He just donates a kill to Memento. As the final breath comes out, now Memento will get run down with the help of Attila. He chases him out, but this is at the cost of a tower in the top lane. Cabochon's gonna push it down. Yeah, he's just gonna force Odoamne back, but uh, observers, just before we jump into the replay, if you could slow-mo what Memento does, he actually flashes during the queue to get the instant knockup to then allow the ultimate to follow him from Abadagi to then guarantee the ultimate follow-up from Memento. So the execution there from Memento, very clean, very crisp, but also just very quick. So Chizuke just didn't have the time to react to the play that was set up by the side of Shell. And we've seen that done a couple times now, right? When Chizuke does go down, it's immediate CC onto him without any time to respond. So Watch this here with Memento because Jazuke goes really deep and that's when Memento says, here's the opportunity, there we can go in. What a beautiful play. Yeah, he catches him off guard. He's not expecting it. You know, he thinks he can react to the just Q that's coming towards him. But because that flash was there in the instant, he gets the knock up and then Abadag can follow. But again, now we're seeing the value of this time Kench pick and how often Vitality have used it to turn what should have been a favorable trade to Schalke back in the favor of Vitality as they end up securing another tower in the bot side of the map. And now as we sort of hop back into the game, I think it's really important to, to look at the lane assignments and specifically Upset sitting here in the middle lane because he's playing the Sivir, traditionally uh, a more vulnerable AD carry, especially to the likes of a Jarvan and a Vladimir trying to dive onto him. So he has to actually play very far back here in this middle lane and wait till the minions come almost near to his turret. Otherwise, he risks being jumped on and being immediately taken down. So what that does is it gives Vitality extra time that you wouldn't necessarily have against other types of champions or if that mid lane tower was still up. So Vitality can move even deeper into this area of the jungle and set up for that big second infernal coming up in just a few seconds. Exactly that, and uh, they're just buying their time. They're keeping pressure up in mid and bot. They don't have teleport towards the top side of the map, but uh, depending on whether or not Cabochard has another, uh, what's it called, spell book? Yeah. Thing available Dodge. left, then he can just swap it back towards the teleport if he so chooses to. So, Vitality do still have options, and I love the vision denial right now. Schalke are very limited in their options at this point in the game. This game has felt a little bit like a 4v4, as the top laners have been living on an island. As it continues to play out that way, Cabochot and Odo Wadne are trading up in the top lane. Memento gets caught out. Oh, oh that's the Cataclysm comes down. Here comes Shizuke. Ignon throws down the ultimate just to stay alive. Boomerang Blade flies across Vitality, who are six thousand gold up we're getting to 20 minutes infernal drake is up but at some point shalka need to do something to bring back this gold deficit because they are falling to a point, a, a deficit that might be insurmountable. Well, first I have to point out that it's not an Infernal Drake. The overlay is a little bit incorrect. Thank it will you. just be an ocean for now. But I have to say, sometimes Mowgli just makes me just reconsider how I think about the game League of Legends. Because right there, it's like he goes in with the EQ combo. Looks like he's just sort of running it into Memento and Ignar. But then knows that the second he overextends like that, they're going to jump on him. So then he has the free ultimate. He traps both of them. There's no kill that that is gained out of it. But it's plays like that the Mowgli always goes for and that creativity that is so impressive. I think it's been something that Vitality as a team have done for a very long time. Um, we've been talking about that Tom Kench pick a lot and historically Jack Troll has played the game the champion 13 times here in Europe. He's five wins, eight losses and the reason I want to highlight that is that creativity both helps and hurts them. I think this year when you think about the rogue backdoor that Vitality employed thanks to Jazuke playing split push, Jazuke playing side lane. Their boldness and their willingness to commit to the play helped them win that game. Uh, last year though, their boldness and their willingness to commit to things sometimes, you know, got their hands burned. And I know it is something we have said a fair amount, but Mowgli has led the way this game, has impacted this mid lane and set Jazuke up. But we finally get to see the second half of this matchup as Oda Wamne is now getting run down. Justin comes out from Cabo. He's looking for fear beyond death. If it can connect, it will be a kill, but it does not. Oda Wamne's move speed and mobility keeps him in safety. He did blow his flash though. Yeah, he did. Big win from Cabo Shard there, but just look at the map. Vitality are moving so far for, forward into Shalka's territory. Big heal there from Odo, making sure he gets it in the window where there is no executioners calling proc on him, but still it's Vitality with complete control. All right, let's just like it. 
it's going to be a lot of trouble for Ignat. Killer Instinct was not used by Attila. He thought about it, though. Attila is up 40 CS over Upset in our match of the day. Cabo Shot is up 30 CS over Oduwamne. And this just feels like Vitality, where they have a point to make. They play a fantastic game. Yeah, I, I, this is what we said at the beginning, right? You actually don't know what Vitality is going to show up on yeah. the day. They're, they're really uh, inconsistent in their performances. Um, yesterday, losing to SK in what was rather one-sided fashion, where Vitality just kind of struggled individually. They made these massive misplays, um, and it's like they had a bad day. And then coming into today, the early game has been great. All of their laners are winning right now. And even in a 1, potentially 2v1, potentially 4v1, Cabo's looking for a kill. All right, Fear Beyond Death is available. Oh. He's going to get himself one. 9,999 damage to take down Oduwamne. Cabo's not done yet. Remember, he's picked himself up a kill. He's brought so much attention to him that Vitality are risking themselves a Baron. Cabo's not done yet. Going to get caught up by the final breath. Takes a lot of damage and finally goes down. It's Upset that gets the kill, that gets the gold, but it's Vitality that gets the Baron. And now Memento trying to come up here. He's way too late. He goes down too. It ends up being a one for two trade in favor of Vitality. Vitality and they get the Baron on top of it. Beautiful stuff from the side of Vitality. They just melt through Schalke. Such a big punish as well. And they had set up all the vision towards the top side of the map. That was in full control of Vitality. And Schalke, they tried to make a desperation play. It didn't work out. They end up getting punished. Oh man, look at the item disparities for the next time these teams fight. We will look at that in just a moment. But here's a replay, of course, of Vitality. Catching Memento before the, uh, uh, after the Baron's already gone down. Yeah, Memento realizes what's going on way too late. Jack Troll is waiting in the only area that Memento can actually approach the pit. So Vitality sort of get away with murder right there, but also set it up well enough that even if Memento had gotten there sooner, he still wouldn't have had any chance. Man, it's so exciting. Of course, if Vitality can play this out, it means that Shelka and Vitality will be tied at seven wins and three losses in the standings. Behind them is a couple teams at six and four, five and four right now but it's just going to be heating up in that race to see who can earn the right to step up to g2 esports for now vitality up seven or 8k they're not done yet mowgli dancing on the edge of safety this time around we'll need to use that stopwatch to stay alive memento will get dunked down killer instinct oh, it's Miller. He manages to oh my god Walmart takes on look at him go Attila does it picks up the kill now he turns his attention to ignor who's forced to flash to safety the hemoblade doesn't get him the kill but it doesn't matter vitality got what they wanted it's just two members of shaka left alive cabo shard is running down ignor he's just outside in the middle lane as well, Oduwamne being run down by Jazuke this whole time. The rest of Vitality go bot lane. They're trying to get a tower and Jazuke gets one more to pad his KDA. Oh, it just feels like the Meg where the giant shark is chasing the poor pedestrians. 10,000 gold and Vedius. This is the most Vitality style game we have seen in a while. This is so Vitality. Ignar using the Hex Flash over the wall. He's actually going to pull off the great escape. But at what cost, you have to ask, because Vitality are still in the bottom lane. They're still pushing, and they get the tower. At the cost of the game, at the cost of second place, if Vitality close this out, I mentioned the standings. I mentioned they will be tied, but their head-to-head -head will also be one-to-one. -one. So in the event of tie breakers we might need to see how that plays out so now, keep an eye on the mini map here and actually how they set this up because you can see vladimir is actually nowhere near the fight and this looks like a great fight initially for shalka but the problem is that they have the teleport available on this ward and the problem is all of the focus is going on to the jarvan meaning that the moment that kaiser joins the fight he has all this freedom on the back line to just melt through everyone on the side of shalka so the back line is left untouched the front line soaks up all the damage and the positioning looked initially promising for shalka but Vitality were very quick to respond and get the collapse. And watching that fight, all I think about is the match of the week video, match of the day video beforehand, where Upset says, Attila, he plays without his brain on. And honestly, Attila played without his brain on right there. He went in as far as he could, first with the killer instinct, then flashed over the wall to get every single kill he could. And he is the man that's taking Vitality for this win. And I really want to highlight his build as well, because we talked about what does Kaiser build on the current patch. He's got Infinity Edge into the Runans, into the Rage Blade, meaning 
correct me if I'm wrong here, Ender, he can double proc his passive onto multiple targets with the Runans and the Rage Blade. Exactly, the that's the plan. The Runans is so good on this Kai'Sa. She doesn't have much CC with this team composition, so the Runans is going to make great use of stacking and applying that to multiple members since he is missing out on that proc. But right now, Vitality, they're still trying to siege. They don't have the Baron buff anymore, but that bottom lane inhibitor is still exposed, and they can try to push and pull Shalka between these two lanes, but Shalka might want to go in. Well, let's see what they can do. Final Breath comes out. Cabin Shot is running for his life. He's put a lot of time. The Devourer will keep him alive, and up Odo one minute forced to go golden. Abadaga is already dead, and Odo's running for his life. Vitality, I've got access to the inhibitor. Jack Shot goes underneath the Nexus turrets, but there was nobody with him. Cataclysm comes down. Oh, 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 oh. Flash. Jack Troll escapes. He manages to walk out. So does Mowgli with the flag and the drag. Jazuka uses the Sanguine Pool. Look at Attila. Attila. Attila goes jumping into the back line. He gets upset. He gets the ace. Vitality are taking down Shulka. Vitality have everything. There is no one left here for Shulka to defend the base. Attila at the helm. He takes down Shulka. He takes down upset. In our match of the day to kick off the second round, Robin, Vitality make a statement that we are here to fight for second place. Beautiful stuff from Vitality. The fact that they had such a commanding early game, they converted it extremely cleanly. They stopped a lot of the mid lane aggression that Shalka tried to set up with the repeated ganks onto Jizuke, and they ended up turning it in their favor. And it was just constant aggression, non-stop proactivity, relentless confidence from the side of Vitality that ultimately dismantled Schalke, and we never really got to see them play this game. Yeah, I mean, and it was nice to see, too, Vitality come in and not just win early game because of Mowgli. They actually just straight up won the two versus two down there in the bottom lane, which just let the rest of Vitality push further and further onto the Schalke side of the map. They basically just choked them out without giving them too many opportunities to try and fight back. One, two, three, 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 three. When Vitality are on a roll, when Vitality have a rhythm, they look fantastic, they play really well. But one of the criticisms is, of course, that firecracker in your hand. If your hand is closed, it blows your hand off. If your hand is open, it just scorches your palm. And that's the risk that Vitality have. It's all in style. Nevertheless, they equal Shalkas head to head at seven and three. I have decided I did not like my win moment there. Saying they're fighting for second. Everybody's fighting for first. Everyone wants to take down G2. But right now, G2 are undisputably the strongest. And it's trying to figure out how does the power levels break out below that? And that's what it is, Vitality's made a big statement win against Shulka today. Exactly, I mean, we know that Europe is such a strong region, right? And to see G2 come in and dominate, that's, it, but that's we great. We you well. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's great, but look, the rest of, of, of the league is still so good. I mean, you come into this year, right? And every team, at least the top six, seven teams, you know every single player here, they almost all have international experience. And you look at a team like Vitality, they bring in Mowgli after a good run at Worlds last year, you expect nothing but the best from them, and that's what they gave us here today. I mean, that's the positive outlook. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit more on the Nancy negative end, uh, because when I see this, I see inconsistencies Boo. from Schalke, I see yep. inconsistencies from Vitality, and both these teams that are fighting for second spot, this means the origin right now is like, well, second place is right now easy pickings. That's because assuming, assuming origin play like they did and yesterday. And this is the thing, consistency is the big thing that I'm looking for in the middle of the pack Neither teams Neither right of now. these teams played like they did yesterday, yeah. nor like they played last week, so I... You know, but this is why I'm saying I'm negative Nancy yeah. right now because I look at these teams and this was a great win for Vitality and this showcases the top end potential yes. of what Vitality is capable of. But we need to see them doing it every game and every week to really start bring them into the conversation of can they be in the running for challenging G2? Can they look to try and fight the top dogs in Europe? I think it comes down to refining, right? And it comes down to if there were a time to be practicing and developing that consistency when you are tied for second in week five of spring, 100%. I'm willing to accept it, yeah. right? But I do acknowledge it. And again, it is a play style trait that you know you, you love and you either perceive what Vitality do as amazing and it's what you like as a fan and as a viewer, 
or you're like, it's risky, it's not smart enough, <laughs> it's not beautiful League of Legends, you know? And like, that's great, you can have differing opinions because there's different ways to play this game. Both of these teams like are the epitome of that. And today, Vitality came out on top. And I did quite like a lot of the strategy that we saw from both teams. The fact that Schalke invested very heavily into their rookie Abadage, I think that, sure, there were a couple of execution errors. The, ta the dying and the name, tower was oh, great. Name a more iconic <laughs> duo. But the, the fact that they were able to, multiple times they invested towards playing towards them mid uh, laner. They tried to make him this big carry. I think it was nice to see from Schalke because it is a bit of a shift from how they typically play with the whole Memento and Ignar just roaming around the map. All that thought super quickly because we do have Poggers to talk about. Uh, for our match of the day, it is a Mowgli, Jazuke, or Attila. These are the suggestions for your Kia player of the game. Head over to at LOL Esports on Twitter and vote. I think you have to vote for Attila. The trash talk was thrown down and boy, did he back it up. It's, what it's just not even close. Well. He played very, very well. Zero and five. I don't care who set him up. I'm saying he is. Man, just such a KDA voter. Quick no, it wasn't the KDA. It was <laughs> literally... Mowgli also had a fantastic game. No, 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 no. It was Attila. The play inside that that side of the jungle by Schalke's blue buff where he dove in with I Killer look at the and then flashed over the wall. Cast. No, These guys that play was like sick. It. I would like to interject. I love the energy and the passion. Thank you for joining me for Wrong. the cast. I apologize to the viewers whose ears have been destroyed by this very petty <laughs> argument. For more on Vitality's win, let's go here from Lord Jack Troll. Thank you very much, Trevor, and thank you for joining me after the victory. Congratulations. It's been a while since we talked. You were feeling off lately, it seems. How is it now? How do you uh, feel? Yeah, I've been actually sick for the two weeks. Okay. Uh, and during this time, I had uh, off games. Uh, but right now, I came back to the health. Mm -hmm. And even though my performance yesterday was very really off, but I'm glad that I bounced back uh, with my team today and we performed pretty well. Uh, I think uh, inconsistency is a big problem uh, about myself, but uh, I'm looking forward to fix it. Can we talk a bit more about inconsistency? Because you talk it about yourself, but I feel like it's a general sentiment in Vitality right now. What is going wrong with the team and how do you find back this consistency? Yeah, so um, our problem is uh, about the screen practice. Mm -hmm. Our screen practice uh, during the early weeks, in, during the split, was uh, atrocious, it was really bad. Uh, and right now, uh, we had honest talk why we suck during the screams. And um, we managed to find the solution, actually. And uh, this week was really good in terms of preparation. So you could see that uh, during the Schalke game. Uh, actually, we shown our lowest lows yesterday, but today we bounced back uh, in the good fashion. Yeah, and with comfort champs like Tam Kench, do you feel like you need those right now to perform? No, uh, <laughs> I can perform on any champ, to be honest. It just, uh, as I said, it's just inconsistency that mm -hmm. uh, is shown on uh, some proper cha on some champions, but I don't think it uh, matters what champion it is. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, I don't know. The performance at this day is uh, just bad. Well, I hope you guys will find this consistency back. Thank you for joining me after the game. And for more on this victory, let's send it to Dracos. Thank you very much, Lore. Now, I like exactly what Jack Troll is saying there, that he says, hey, this is a great win for us, but also, you know, this it, we are still a team that's been struggling. We've been struggling to find that inconsistency, that bit of honesty there showing through about what's been going wrong for Vitality is good to hear so often in these post-game interviews. You know, it's just, everything's good, we're the best, we beat Schalke, everyone else sucks, you know, and that kind of feels like what people expect from a Vitality interview, but Jack Troll pulling it back a little bit, saying, hey, we have things to work on, but things are getting a little bit better. I think Vettius said it best. In this week, and Jack Troll just said it as well, you you, you kind of got to see the, the lows and the highs of Vitality. You got the SK Vitality and like the Shulk of Vitality. And the question is always going to be, which one are you going to get on the day? And hopefully for a Vitality fans, it's more of this last one that we got. Absolutely. Now, before we get into breaking down the game itself, let's take a look at what happened before that, which is the picks and bans. And it's going to be interesting to see how both of these teams set themselves up for success immediately right off the bat. I think we see a lot of things that we've, we've kind of expected. You know, priority picks like the Draven taken off the board, the Lucian, the Ezreal as well. Interestingly here, Talk to me about this Yasuo first pick, because the thing is, is I, I know that conventionally it's considered to be incredibly strong right now, but how do you feel about Schalke putting so much priority on this early on? 
It's not my favorite, especially when uh, you had things like the Jace and the Kenna getting banned. It just like it made the Urgot priority that much higher up, even though it came through in second phase. So I understand what they're doing. I mean, like on the new patch, we already saw G2 run away with Yasuo when you use it as a flex book. But I'm actually unsure if Shalka have that same um, ability with Yasuo. I know that, um, you know, Upset has a large champion pool, but I haven't seen him pull out the Yasuo quite yet. So maybe it's there. But if it's just about getting that priority pick for Abadon, I think Jizuke has now thrown down the gauntlet and gives kind of a blueprint for other teams that say you can't just grab this champion and try to make do on the 9.3 build path with Yasuo that spikes so much harder on two items because uh, they can pull out a Vladimir. Yeah, and it was a good look on the Vladimir overall. Interesting as well not to see Odawamne prioritize more. Like two of his premier champions both could have like been available here, but they opt not to take it. It was surprising. But the, uh, I think the bigger issue besides just this draft frost Garn was a lot of the early plays. And as we look back on how Schalke executed some of these, it, it really felt like this team was not coordinated in their mechanical execution, especially in this play on the bottom side. Now, it has to be said, when someone does throw, someone has to catch it. And Vitality did a great job of catching that. Talk, trash, get smashed. That was the name of this. I didn't um, you made that one appropriate. I well know, I, I had to really <laughs> bend it in there. But the fact of the matter is, is that Shalka made massive misplays in multiple lanes multiple times. I know that the joke was this tower, you know, name a more iconic duo. You can see what Abadage is trying to do. He's trying to play to the limits of his champions. The fact of the matter is, is that he misplays it though. He doesn't have the skill. He couldn't back it up. And on the day, he fed so much power into Jizuke's pocket. And it was so interesting, too, because you, you don't expect, especially a player, like Abadag is a younger player. Yasuo is a champion we haven't seen him before. You cut him some slack. But for a guy like Ignar, who knows his matchup, I mean, guys, Tom Kench is mostly a W bot against ranged supports. But if you all in this guy, if you've ever played against a solo Tom Kench, you instantly understand the power here. This champion has so much sustained damage. If you don't win the trade and get out, Tom Kench is going to mess you up. And there's kind of two ways to take this. It's really easy if you're like Schalke coach and Schalke players to go backstage and be like, okay, this sucks, this hurts, but it's fairly clear what happened here. You know, we made massive misplays in every single lane, but if you're Vitality, you're like, how dare you think that you could step to this? We are the 51% team. This is never even. We're just better players and we proved it on the day. Well, and interestingly, too, I mean, they backed it up. You're right, that they did catch, that Schalke did give up those early leads, but Vitality just kept putting the pressure on, and a lot of that manifested, I felt like, in the bot lane matchup, where once Attila was unlocked, once Attila had an unleag uh, a lead, he just took over in so many of these exchanges. Yeah, and what's cool here is... Uh it was talked about briefly in the cast, because if we're talking about the 280 carries, and once the map has opened up, and once it's about grouping and you know making these big plays around Baron, the fact of the matter is, is that Upset is on Sivir against a Tom Kench and a Jarvan. He cannot farm safely anyway. And at this point, as the Sivir, all Upset's saying to his team is, is I need to get to three items. So create open farm lanes for him, and because he couldn't do it safely, it just delayed everything. Kaisa is still going to uh, pack a significant punch on two items, despite the fact that her build path is uh, been changed up so the fact that Attila smashed up set in lane was springboard on Kaisa and then was able to be uh, a stronger carry on two items versus the Sivir was just kind of salt in the wound to twist that knife. Of course, Attila coming through as our player of the game. 48% of the boats, some incredible performances, especially in those last few fights for Oscar and where he's diving over the wall, where he's following up those kills and a huge return to form. You heard us say it before the game began that we did not expect a lot after a couple of big fumbles here. But after the interview from Jack Till, you heard about inconsistency and this is the top end from Attila we were hoping to see. And that's the thing, when you see a Kaisa and a uh, Tom Kinch picked up, I'm thinking like, okay, Vitality have got it figured out. All they need to do is stop the bleeding of Attila and Jack Till just control these guys, play very safe, and you can allow Jizuke and Cabo Shard to hard carry. But they went one more. They're like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not about playing safe. It's about murdering everyone and making a point. And that is what I love about the Portuguese powerhouse. It absolutely. It came through for this team overall. I love the Tom Kench bringing him to mid lane, taking him everywhere they needed to go so this man could follow up. It was a good look from Vitality today. Well, from Super Team to 1-5 and five in their last six game, what is happening with Misfits Gaming? Big question. We're going to talk more about that as they face off against Rogue right after this. Boom. Headbutt, pulverized. That's going to knock Attila into the wall temporarily. Stun him up as well. Devour comes down from Jack Troll. Whoa. And Ignor is going to get blown up. First blood. Sanguine pool will buy some time as Shizuke is getting burned. Abadage manages to pick up the kill. There's only a second one on the card. Mowgli goes down. Golden Ages buys a few Whoa. more seconds. Mowgli no. turns back around. That's a double kill. 
Mr. Kewen, two for Vitality. This time around, we'll need to use that stopwatch to stay alive. Memento will get dunked down. Killer Instinct, you oh, Vitality. Oh, He manages to Oh, my himself. God! Walmart takes on him to go! Vitella does it! Picks up the kill with the flag and the drag. Jazuka uses the Sanguine Pool. Look at Attila! Oh, Attila goes jumping into the back line. He gets upset. He gets the ace. Vitality are taking down Shulker.